Well, hello, it's me, Leah, from Charlie Darwin Textiles. Today, we're gonna be sewing a beautiful, boxy, possibly linen, if you so choose, t-shirt. And to sew along with me, you can go ahead and grab my new sewing pattern, the saltwater shirt, over at charliedarwintextiles.com forward slash patterns. This shirt is actually just one part of a two-piece set. It pairs exceptionally well with the saltwater shorts and you could buy the shirt and shorts pattern separate or as part of a bundle deal. But the short sewing tutorial will be in a different video. The shirt sewing pattern currently comes in at nine body sizes up to a 49 inch bust. And I think that the best part is that it's super beginner friendly and it can be very easily customized to your personal style. So I'll include the instructions for sewing two different views, either a straight cut short sleeve or a uh, elbow length sleeve with ruffles. And you can also choose whether you want to add the chest pocket or leave it ultra minimalist. Up to you. I really honestly think that you're going to find the saltwater shirt and shorts to be super adventure ready, whether it's hiking, biking, traveling, but they're also just so cozy, comfy that you really can just fall asleep in them and wear them as pajamas too. So we'll be sure to finish all of our seams and reinforce our pocket so that everything is really built for adventure and durability. All right, grab your pattern, saddle up, and I'll show you how to make the shirt. Once you've consulted the size chart and you got your pattern downloaded in your preferred size, then print it out at 100% custom scale, and then you can assemble the pages by overlapping them at the edges, but without trimming them at all. You can check out my other YouTube video for exactly how to do this in a little bit more detail. Now cut out the pattern, then calculate how much to adjust it for your body height. I, I recommend you try out my height adjustment calculator and this YouTube video tutorial to help you with that. And if you follow the height adjustment calculator, your shirt's bottom hemline should fall approximately around five to six inches below your belly button. And I find that this is just the right length for tucking into pants. It's not too long or too short, but definitely feel free to add or subtract even more length to turn this shirt into a crop top or a tunic style. Before you get started on cutting your fabric, especially if you're working with linen or cotton, these fabrics that wrinkle so easily, you just wanna iron it so there's no wrinkles and it's laying straight and flat. Then go ahead and position your pattern pieces so that the arrows are running parallel to the selvage edge. After tracing your pattern pieces onto your fabric, go ahead and cut everything out and then we can get started on the sewing. Woohoo! Yeah! Let's sew it! Let's do it. Sew it, sew it, sew it, sew it. All right, so we have all of our pieces cut out for our saltwater shirt. I have my two sleeve pieces and I have my sleeve ruffle pieces. I cut mine out on the selvage edge because my fabric had a really pretty selvage edge to it that I wanted to incorporate into my design. Uh, I brought some alternate strips and I'll show you in a later step how we're just going to hem those so that you have a nice clean finish edge on your ruffles later. We also have our chest pocket and that's gonna go on our bodice front piece and then we have our bodice back piece. Oh, and we also have our neckline bias binding and because it's cut on the bias or the diagonal it's got a little bit of a stretch to it i'm not going to stretch it out too much here what we're going to start with is before we even get started on really the construction is just to make sure that our necklines don't get stretched out we're going to go ahead and run a stay stitching line around each of our front and back necklines so i'll go ahead and make sure that i iron it nice and flat but I'm actually trying to kind of pinch it inward, make sure I'm not stretching it out. And I'm just gonna run one line of straight stitching, back stitching at each end, a quarter inch from the raw edge. I'm gonna do that on the front and the back. All right, so we have one line of stay stitching on each of our necklines. Now I'm going to take my bodice front piece. I can tell because it's the one I have the chest pocket dot on. And for your chest pocket, what you can do is surge around all four sides and then turn each of the four sides towards the wrong side by one half inch. So each of the four sides would get turned in by one half inch. 
if you don't have a serger, then you would just take each raw edge and fold it under a quarter inch and then a quarter inch again around all four edges. So since I surged, I'm just going to go ahead and press them all under by a half inch. And I'm just going to pick one of these edges to be my top side. I think I like this uh, last edge I did the best to be my top because it overlays all over all of the folds. I'm going to do a straight stitch 1 8 inch from that edge there and back stitch at each end. All right, so now I have that top edge stitched and my other three edges are just simply folded at this point in time. I'm going to place the pocket on my bodice front piece. Just making sure that everything is going very straight up and down. I can kind of use the grain line of my fabric to help orient me. And I'm just going to place those top corners at the dot where I have indicated on my pattern. Go ahead and just pin all the way around. All right, now I'm going to straight stitch from my top corner around the three sides and to my other top corner. I am going to make a little triangle in each of the corners so that it has a little bit more durability when I uh, am, you know, giving this pocket some good wear and tear. And this one's pretty small, but you can sort of see that reinforcement there, how it turned out in the corner. All right, now we're ready to attach our bodice front to our bodice back at the shoulders. I'm going to grab my bodice back piece and with right sides facing each other, I'm going to layer my bodice back on my bodice front. Now we're going to straight stitch with a half inch seam allowance across those shoulders and then finish the seam with a serger zigzag stitch um, binding however you prefer. I'm going to be serging all of my seams finished and I'm just going to be cutting off about um, a quarter inch as I serge them. All right now we're going to attach our neck bias binding to our neck hole here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bias binding, fold it in half, and just straight stitch with half inch seam allowance on that short edge. Press that seam open on the neckline bias binding, and I'm going to come over and we're ready to attach it to our neck hole here. Real quick before I do that, I'm going to press those shoulder seam allowances toward the back bodice. So I have my bodice facing up and it's going to be facing the right side of my neckline bias binding. I'm going to go ahead and take that seam we just created on the bias binding and line it up with the shoulder seam with just one of the shoulder seams, doesn't matter which one, and pin it in place I'm going to be aligning the raw edge of my bias binding with the raw edge of the neckline. And I'm going to pin all the way around. I find that this takes just a little bit of finagling to make sure that your neckline hasn't stretched out, make sure everything's pulled kind of evenly throughout the neckline. Use as many pins as you feel comfortable with. On a curve like this, I'll usually do a pin about every inch or two. All right, so we have it pinned all the way around with those inner raw edges aligned. Now I'm going to do a straight stitch around that inner raw edge about one quarter inch from the edge. All right, so we have that line sewn in a quarter inch from the raw edge. We still have our right side of our fabric facing up. I'm going to take this other raw edge and I'm going to press it inward towards the neck hole. with So I'm basically pushing both the seam allowance that we just made and the rest of the neckline bias inward. You might have to sort of move around a little bit as you go. Oh, and it looks like I caught a little bit of a snag here in my neckline, so I'm just gonna rip that out, unfortunately, and smooth everything out. If that happens to you, just pick out some of the seams around where you had that bunching 
And you come in with your iron, you can usually sort of finagle the fabric a bit to lie flat again. Repin and take it back over to your sewing machine. All right, we're back in action. Now I'm going to flip my entire bodice over with the wrong side now facing up. Might have quite a few straggler threads at this point. You can trim those up. And we're going to grab that now inner uh, raw edge and turn it under by a quarter inch so that the raw edge hits just at that seam line that we made in the previous step. Use your iron, press it down really nice to get a crisp fold, working all the way around this oval. Now we're going to fold the neckline one more time by another quarter inch. This time, now our very first seam line we made there is going to tuck just right inside the neck hole and all of those raw, scraggly edges are going to be folded nice, safe and sound inside of our bias binding. Just a reminder, this is a good point to add a garment tag if you have one that hangs down and you can nest it right there in your neck bias binding. All right, so we are going to go ahead and stitch 1 8 inch away from that fold that we just made there. So we now have our neckline bias binding on there and I like to just give it one more press to get it a little bit flatter and cleaner. Now we're ready to move on to our sleeves. So I'm going to set my bodice aside. And if you're doing just the plain short sleeve piece, all you need to do at this stage is just turn this bottom hem of the sleeve up by one quarter inch. Go ahead and press it so it stays in place. And we're going to go ahead and return to that at a, a later step. So that's all for if you're doing view B. But to do our ruffles, what we need to do is prepare our ruffle strips for gathering. So I'm gonna show you on the selvage edge strips and then I'll just show you also how to do, if you're not using your selvage edge, then you're going to want to hem up one of your long edges. So. I am going to turn that long edge up just by a quarter inch, just a tiny bit. Then I'm going to turn it under a quarter inch one more time. I think the smaller the rolled hem here, the better. So if you can go even as small as an eighth inch, that would be great too. But we just want to make sure that we are getting just a little bit of fabric there. So that's what that looks like. And you would just do a straight stitch all the way along that inner fold and back stitch at each end. Now, if we're doing our sleeves with um, a selvage edge here, then they're all ready to go. I'm not gonna do any turning on them. So I'm gonna start with my gathering stitch and I'm going to stitch one quarter inch from my, along my top long edge I'm just going to back stitch at the beginning, but I'm not going to back stitch at the end. I'm actually going to leave a tail of about six inches of thread at the one end. Now, a key point here is that over at our sewing machine, we're going to be using our longest stitch length so that it is a little bit easier, easier to pull that thread and gather it. Now, I'm just going to repeat that on my other ruffle piece. All right, so let's go ahead and attach our ruffle to the bottom of our sleeve. We have our sleeve head up here. And I'm going to align that raw edge of my ruffle with the raw edge of my sleeve with right sides facing each other. And I have a special trick here that I like to do when I do ruffles. I like to, just to make sure I have everything the right size, I have a padded work surface here, which is really nice. So I will just put one of my pins through all of my layers here, both my ruffle, my sleeve, and my ironing surface. And now I can't lift this off of my ironing surface, it's pinned all the way through. So I've got that edge lined up, then I take this edge on this side, 
line it up with the edge of my sleeve. And again, I'm pinning all the way through. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get that pin to come back up on the other side, but we got it. And then I'll stick a little anchor pin off on the side that I'm going to be pulling the threads. So this is for anyone, even if you're doing this pinning method or not, you're going to be grabbing the top loose thread on our on uh, the one we didn't do our back stitch on. Grab that top thread and start pulling it really gently. This thread can snap if you pull it too hard. So just pull it real gently and start to work the fabric down that thread so it starts to bunch and gather and start to pull it a little bit more evenly across. And now we want to pull this thread so its tension is pulling our entire ruffle piece to the exact width that we need for our bottom of our sleeve. And once we've got that correct tension pulled, we're just going to wrap it around our side pin here in sort of a figure eight around it. And then now I have both hands free to get my ruffles to the exact spot. We know that they're the right width and now I just need to pull them exactly where I want them. And I'm going to do probably a little bit less ruffling over next to my edges just because that's where we're going to be sewing and it's also going to be your underarm. And ruffles never need to be perfect, that's kind of the fun of them. Once I like the spacing enough, I'll come in with my hot iron and just press right on top. It just comes straight down and squish them nice and flat so it'll be easier to sew. And I'm going to add a pin every few inches just to hold everything in place. Now I'm gonna take out my edge pins from the ironing surface and keep them though in my sleeve. And now I'm just going to repeat this on my second sleeve. Once you have your ruffles pinned to both sleeves, you're going to, with a straight stitch, back stitching at each end, you're going to stitch a half inch seam allowance all the way across. Then go ahead and finish your seam however you're doing it, whether that's serging or zigzag stitching. Before doing this straight stitch, make sure to turn your stitch length back to its normal setting. For me, I'm doing 2.5. Under my sewing machine, I have the ruffle side up. Now with our right side facing up, I'm going to take that seam allowance from the back here and sort of use my fingers to push it upward towards the sleeve head up there. And come in with my iron and press that. Repeat on the second sleeve. And now we're going to add a straight line of top stitching one eighth inch from that seam line. Back stitching at each end. All right, now we're ready to attach our sleeves to our bodice with the right side facing up on our bodice. Go this way so you can see it better in the video. We're going to be attaching our sleeve to our sleeve curve here. Shoulder line is right in the center. So I'm just going to, if, I, if you didn't mark the center of your sleeve before, I'm just gonna fold my sleeve in half real quick and press so that I get that fold line right in the center and I know where to line it up. So I'm gonna line up the center of my sleeve with the shoulder seam with, oop, wrong way, with right sides facing. So I want the right side of my sleeve facing down towards my right side of my bodice. And I'm going to be working this sleeve all the way around. Now if you're a little bit more of a newbie and you want to take baby steps here, you can line up these raw edges all the way around with lots of pins just to make sure that you get there in good shape and don't have any bunching fabric along the way. Your sleeve hole curve may have stretched out 
a little bit in the process. So you might use your iron to kind of condense it back in or stretch out your sleeve piece a little bit to get it there. So again, I'm just gonna line up that inner corner of the sleeve with the corner of my bodice and work all the way around. I don't typically tend to fuss with this many pins. I usually just do one at each corner and one in the center and then work it through my machine as I go. But either way is good as long as you get to the end result. So now I'm going to take this bodice piece with my sleeve over to my machine and sew with a half inch seam allowance all the way around these, this long curve here. And then I'm going to finish the edge with my serger. I like to pin and sew one sleeve at a time, just so as I'm sewing one, the pins don't come out on the other side. But once you've sewn up one side, go ahead and repeat all these steps on your second sleeve. So now we have our sleeves coming off of both sides. And we're just gonna go ahead and press that seam flat towards the wrist. Before we do our underarm and side seams, we're just gonna prep the bottom hem of our bodice front and back. So on, right now I have my bodice back, I'm just going to turn that bottom edge under towards the wrong side by one quarter inch and press really well with my iron and then go ahead and repeat it on the second side. Now with our right sides facing of our bodice front and our bodice back, we're going to pin our underarm and side seam. So I'm just lining up my folded bottom hem there and lining up any other key points like my underarm seam and my sleeve hem and then pinning a few places in between. Now we'll take this over to our sewing machine and do a one half inch seam allowance, stitching all the way from our bottom hem, turning at our underarm, and coming all the way through to the end of our sleeve or if you did the ruffle to the end of your ruffle. Back stitch at each end and then go ahead and repeat all these steps on your other underarm and side seam. Because my um, bottom hem is going to be turned under one more time, I just snipped that serger thread. But over here, this is going to be our final edge of our sleeve. So I just like to tuck my serger thread back into itself. I know some people snip it and then use something like fray check, fray check, but I just use this giant textile needle and pull that thread backwards up through. And ta-da! I've got a nice finished edge here on my sleeve. If you did just the regular sleeve and you only had your quarter inch hem so far, you'll just want to turn a second quarter inch up on your sleeve um, and sew all the way around one eighth inch from the inner fold. All right, we're already to our very last step. We just need to finish our final hem on the shirt at the bottom. So we have our wrong side facing up and I'm just going to turn, we had already done a quarter inch here and I'm going to turn it another quarter inch up and towards the wrong side of the shirt. Press it with your iron and do this all the way around the bottom hem. Take this over to our sewing machine and sew one eighth inch from that inner fold back stitching at each end. I like to do my back stitching somewhere over at a side seam so it's a little bit less obvious. All right, that's it for our saltwater shirt. You can turn it right side out, give it a shake, and it's ready to try on. Woohoo! You did it, you sewed it. You're basically an intergalactic sewing wizard. And you know, I just hope you'll enjoy tons of fun adventures while wearing this shirt. And if you get any photos in it, please do upload them as a review on the product page or just shoot me an email privately and say, hi Leah, this is what I made. If you enjoyed this experience, I highly recommend that you check out the rest of my pattern collection over at charliedarwintextiles.com forward slash patterns. And go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can get more sewing tutorials and behind the scenes of my little handmade linen clothing business.
See you in the next one.